Just like the Tatum and Brown matchup, you know, RJ and Fournier are going to get tested on the wings as well. You have two dynamic scorers in, in DeRozan and, and Levine and two guys that, that can get to the rim, that like uh, that like to get to the free throw line, rather. So, you know, RJ and, and Fournier are certainly going to get tested on the perimeter. Yeah, it's, it's going to be a fun matchup. I'm sure Corey would agree just because of, mm -hmm. um, and I'm interested to hear what, you know, what Corey's personal matchup that he's going to look forward to because you have you have a lot here you know with Mitch and and, and, and Mitch and Vucevic, Vucevic. you have yeah. Mitch and Vucevic you even have the young Patrick Williams and, and Julius, Julius. Randle there you know that's going to be a big uh, matchup Kemba, Kemba Lonzo Kemba you know, Lonzo uh, Derek, be a big Derek Rose going back to Chicago yeah, yeah. against Lonzo <laughs> yeah there's a lot and of Rose like Rose you know, and Caruso I'm sure Caruso is going to be trying to check Rose uh, right. uh AO and and quickly it's, it's going to be some big matchups man yeah, there's going to be some big matchups. Um, and I, I'm just interested to see how the Knicks play in terms of who they put Fournier on. Do you go with mm -hmm. Levine? If you go Levine, now you, you know, you're dealing with Levine's athleticism. Um, but if, you know, what's the better matchup? If you go RJ on, on, you know, DeRozan, DeRozan is a solid vet, very savvy, knows, yeah. knows how to get to his spots. Uh, so I think it'll be interesting to see how the Knicks mix and match um, all around the, the, the board, though. There's some there's some very intriguing matchups. Cool. Yeah, I was actually going to ask you guys, yeah. who, you, who do you think RJ is going to start on? You know, I know he's saying he wants to come out and be that guy who takes the best player every night. He's got to go out of so, Levine. He's got to go it's out of Levine. Yeah, I think I think it's DeRozan. You think it's DeRozan? I think, yeah, I think because, he's gotta go at because I think I think because uh, the Rosen's get, well, I guess you can say, you know, if 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 you can live with the twos, if you really want to look at it that way. But then see, people say that a lot about the Rosen. But when he's on, he kind of dictates the game a little bit. He can he can really control the game. And he's he's an underrated passer. You yeah, know, last year with, with, you know, with the Spurs, he played a lot of a playmaker role. And I believe he had a career high in assists. So yeah. um, you can use RJ's strength against uh, DeRozan's mid-range game. You put him on Levine. Now, you know, Levine likes to run around a little bit sometimes. And when he's hot, he's shooting from anywhere. Now RJ now has to do that. Kind of rather have him be more compact on a DeRozan yeah. matchup and kind of see. So I don't know, man. I think you, you start one way. And then you see so how you see who gets adjustments. hot and who doesn't, and then you kind of mix and match. That's how I would do it. But I got to see Mitch against Vucevic because Vucevic has killed the Knicks. He's averaging, he's averaging double double, eighteen and ten against the Knicks in his career. That's going to be an interesting matchup. But Mitch has got to because the Bulls can't go small on you. But I think Mitch, if Mitch can help control the boards and battle Vucevic on the boards, I think that gives up a, gives us a leg up in the game as well. Yeah, that's going to be a tough matchup for Vucevic because, yeah, I, man, I was watching the, the Knicks the other day, and Mitch is huge, man. Yeah. Block, like he block, is block. Huge. He's flexing. He's flexing every play. If he's he can like, be healthy out there, he's a good look. You know, because he came into the league, he he didn't have, like, this big body. Now he's he's got some thickness to him, and uh, mm -hmm. and I mean, he's tall as hell, long as hell. It's, it's going to be a tough matchup for Vucevic. Um, you know, I, th I guess, you know, the for Vucevic – Mitch isn't a threat from the three-point line, so right. he can kind of concentrate staying around the hoop. So he's got that going for him. But that athleticism and that length, and, and you know, it's it's a huge part of the Knicks, you know, game getting him back, having him healthy this year. Yeah, no doubt about it, man. I also feel like you know, for the Knicks, what they've shown so far, at least early in this season, is um, being able, being able to execute out in transition. And that's where the second unit to me comes into play when you have Rose. You have quickly Burks and especially Obi Top, and I think that's an area where they need to capitalize. You know, Bulls half court defense has been solid, but if the Knicks can force them in some tough shots, get the rebound and get out and push, I think that's another area where the Knicks may have an advantage. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, I'm, I mean, transition is when chaos occurs, right? That's when you get mismatches, cross matches, and and you look up and down the roster. You, you know, Derrick Rose putting pressure on the defense. You got you know guys like Fournier and and quickly who are going to be running the wings, running the break. You got to run out, try to you know contest on those guys. You got Mitch running to the rim. I mean, it, the Knicks are a problem in transition, and you know we're not even talking about what what Julius could do. You know, as a trailer, and and I mean. It's uh, they're they're a handful in, in the in transition for sure, and and that's going to be a challenge for for the Bulls, and I think that's 
one of the areas where Caruso is going to have to step up in, in this game. You know, he's a guy that's going to bring that energy and, and he likes to play fast, get out and in transition. He's got to do it defensively too. And I, I think he's, you know, maybe for the Bulls, he'd be their defensive uh, X factor out in transition, trying to stop the Knicks. Corey, how's their, how's their like overall bench, you know, in terms of overall rotation uh, options that mm. the Bulls have all, you know, off the bench, you know, you, we talk about the Knicks bench, you know, the Knicks having a bunch of options on the offensive end and them being one of the top, in my opinion, you know, bench in the NBA. Where do the Bulls fall into in that conversation in terms of bench? Who are their their weapons? Are, are they, you know, are they developing some guys or is that an area that still needs improvement in your opinion? Well, we're missing one of our biggest bench pieces in Kobe White right now. Yeah, you know, he's, big he's piece. still nursing a shoulder thing. I think when, when he comes back, the Bulls bench is going to be, you know, pretty deadly um, having him come off it and just firing away. But right now, Caruso is really the only consistent piece. Uh, the Bulls don't have a second big man, really. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's Vucevic and, and that's it. You know, you, you could say Tony Bradley, but he hasn't really played this year. I think he's, he's hurt. Um, and then it's kind of a, a bunch of rangy wings. You got, um, you know, Alizé Johnson, you got Javante Green, you got Troy Brown Jr. And so far you've had at least one of those guys step up on any given night. And when they're, when the bulls have been at home, those guys have brought so much energy to the bench. Um, you know, they don't have a ton of size and that's the problem with the bulls bench right now. All those guys bring something. They, they can, you know, uh, hit the offensive glass kind of, you know, get in passing lanes, cause havoc defensively. They're great rotating over. They bring energy. And, and again, you know, when the bulls are at home, it's a big, big help. Uh, when the Bulls are on the road, and you really—that's when you really need your benches to kind of, you know, bring Step it. Off. Is yeah, when, yeah. yeah, you know, is, is in road games. Um, that's it's hard for the bench to be consistent in those uh, situations. So, you know, I think that's going to be something the Bulls are going to have to look to upgrade at some point. But again, you know, Kobe White's a big piece of that, and when he comes back, you know, it'll it'll be a major help in, you know, hoping the the Bulls bench plays consistently because right now it's it's Caruso, and, and that's kind of yeah, it. and 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 yeah. And and you're guessing after that, but yeah, yeah. shout out Andrew H in the chat that reminded us Kobe White had banged uh, eight threes on the Knicks. I think it was last <laughs> year. So uh, yeah, when when he comes back, that that bench will definitely be interesting to see. But as you said, you know, with Vucevic and and not much else in size, I think again that's an area where the Knicks look to capitalize, get on the mm-hmm. boards between Julius, Mitch, Ob. You know, RJ is going to be needed to get on the boards. Burks is a good rebounder as well. So I think you know controlling glass is certainly an area that can help us. And then again, if, if we can get out and transition get out and run uh we, we will we'll be all right I, I think it's a good matchup though i think it's a very very interesting matchup uh between these two teams very evenly matched so uh, let's see how that uh how that all shakes out <laughs> 